So Winnie the Pooh obviously has an established musical history. Can you talk about how you use that as a foundation? And then some of your inspiration for the film is really great. Like you used a drinking song for the winning song. Is that right? <laughs> That's right. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean what part, of, part of what made this such an appealing project for us was the fact that we were trying to fit it into this canon of, of Sherman Brothers classics. Uh, and that we would get to, you know, research those songs and figure out what made them tick and try and write in that style. Um, so we knew what we needed to do was write you know, extremely simple stuff, but stuff that had its own, uh, enough meat on the bones that, that parents would, wouldn't think it was just kitty, you know, cheap music. Um, so we did, we did look to other, um, uh, when we, <laughs> this is one, this one moment in the score, they, they had just, uh, they had written a little winner song that was in the movie that was peppered throughout because it's a contest um, for finding a new tale for Eeyore and the, the winner would get, would uh, everyone would sing the song to the winner. Win the honey pot. Win yeah. the honey pot. So, um, so I, I went to Yale um, and at Yale there was this, um, there was this place called Maury's where, um, where people would pass around this, these huge goblets and just drink punch and when it got down near the bottom everyone would start to sing a song called It's. <laughs> we're like, it's Kristen. It's Kristen. Kristen makes the world go round. It's like like that. It's like that. And so we we based our our win, our version of this winner song on on that Yale drinking drinking song. song. So Kristen, you also voiced Kanga. In the That's movie. right. Now I don't know how this would work, but in any way, did one inspire or affect the other writing the songs? And yes, they, they did. Uh, there's okay. no way I ever ever would have gotten to be the voice of an animated character if I had not been writing the songs for it. I'm a mother of two. I'm not out there auditioning as an actress. I'm a songwriter. Um, but we uh, we do these demos when we turn in songs. We we have a little recording home recording studio, and um, and send them off, and the directors listen to them, and and they get put into the movie. And I think they just got used to hearing my voice as Kenga. I think also act. because we we would do all of our collaboration over the phone, and she, so Kristen was only known to them as a voice. I was I was this <laughs> voice because we have uh, we had a three week old when we started working on this. So I was this voice. And in fact, today is the first time the directors have ever seen us in the same location because one of us or the other of us always flew out because our children were too small to leave or bring. Um, that sounds exhausting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, you, you said that the tummy, Pooh's tummy, is the villain of the piece, which mm. I think is hilarious. And it's so and true. And it's him, too. That's it, his voice. That's your yeah, voice. That's You're my, the tummy. That's my growl, uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, can you explain how he's the villain? The tummy is the villain. I'm now he's a he. I don't know. Well, why. you know, Pooh is like Pooh. Pooh is torn between help, wanting to help his friends and wanting to serve his own needs. And the tummy is the is the voice of those that sort of selfishness. Um, you know, do you do you spend your time looking for honey for yourself, or do you do you help your friends? And and it gets Pooh into a lot of trouble too. It it, it gets him. Yeah. He get ends up in a pit. That's true. Everyone ends up in the pit, but it also gets them out of the pit. So the tummy, you can also, uh, when the way it's animated, sometimes when it's growling ferociously, and it's you can see it's actually pulling him in, in the direction of poop. Um, so, so it's, it's really like not it's like the ring, the one ring that rules them all. <laughs> <laughs> the tummy is the precious. Yes. Yes. The tummy <laughs> is Sauron, Lord of the Earth. <laughs> Was there one character above all of the others that you were most excited to sort of write for? Well, I mean, I, I love, I have huge affection for Eeyore. I grew up, um, my, my like doll, the one you sleep with every night, was Eeyore until I was 21 years old. Um, so, so to get to write, and he has the best one-liners. When I was reading the books in my 20s, I just, I loved Eeyore, and I would laugh by myself at night reading what Eeyore wrote in the A.A. Milne. So to get to write for him was great. Eeyore didn't write it, I know that. Now that I said, you <laughs> 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 just looked at me. <laughs> um, yeah, but unfortunately, the song we got to write for Eeyore, you know, Eeyore gets to kind of grunt and get punched around. And he doesn't and get to write. Sort of a punching one. bag in that yeah. song. <laughs> Poor Eeyore. What was it like working with Zoe Deschanel? You know, it's funny. We haven't we haven't actually met her yet. Uh, we're going to meet her tomorrow. She she basically came in and she wrote a song for the end credits and she sang the Sherman Brothers song. Um, and then uh, it, it seemed to fit that she would become kind of the musical uh, narrator, the troubadour of the, of the show. So we had written a lot of stuff for chorus, 
that would just be sort of disembodied and, and singing in the background. So what happened was she, she kind of overlaid her voice on top of our voices, um, and therefore, and, and thereby we kind of created this little tight, tight harmony barbershop group without ever having met each other. But we're going to start a barbershop quartet and wear cute little outfits and bow ties. Yeah, this was Zoe's idea, actually. <laughs> we met over Zoe. email, and she was like, I think, we, I think the next step is barbershop. <laughs> well, I'm looking forward to seeing that. Congratulations. Thank you.